What is Einstein famous for? Why is his name synonymous with intelligence? What has he contributed to science? The pillars of general relativity are the field equations, which Einstein formulated around 1915. So it is absolutely essential to get a grasp of the significance of these equations if one is either to defend or attack general relativity. What do they mean in physical terms? Let's begin with an analogy to illustrate Einstein's train of thought. We start out with a fish in a fishbowl. The left-hand side of the equation is a description of the medium, the water. Of course, the mathematicians have never specified where this finite medium begins or ends. We have no idea what the shape of the bowl looks like. But let's overlook and continue. The right-hand side is a description of matter placed inside this medium. In our example, the fish. We have the gravitational field on the left and a chunk of matter on the right. Many of you are aware. General relativity proposes that gravity is geometry. Gravity is space-time curvature. So to illustrate this properly, we should include a bit of curvature. This is a dynamic process, a sort of symbiotic relationship between the water and the fish. The fish weighs down and tells the fluid body how to bend and the warping of the fluid body pays back in kind and tells the fish how to move. So what does Einstein do next? Einstein removes the fish. We had the little fish swimming peacefully in the body of water. We had matter floating in a gravitational field. Einstein sets the right-hand side of his equation to zero. This is equivalent to saying that he has removed all matter from the universe. This, he says, is the gravitational field outside the body. This is his starting point. He wipes the slate clean of matter. You are staring at the virgin gravitational field before we put matter in Einstein's universe. But we have a minor problem. As we said earlier, general relativity proposes that gravity is geometry. Gravity is curved space-time. Therefore, to illustrate Einstein's immaculate gravitational field correctly, we must put the curved lines back in. The problem here is that, according to general relativity, these curved lines can only be generated by the presence of matter. Einstein ends up with a circular argument. He wants to start his mathematical journey with a pristine gravitational field free of matter. But the relativistic gravitational field is curved space-time, which can only be induced by the presence of matter. Let's have Mr. Stephen Crawthers explain to us in mathematical terms what the mathematicians are doing. What we have here, as you say, is our Einstein's field equations. Uh, it's a very straightforward expression. What we have here is G sub UV equals minus kappa times T sub UV. This G sub UV is called the Einstein tensor and this T sub UV is called the energy momentum tensor. And minus kappa is very simple, it's just a coupling constant. So Einstein's field equations state that the gravitational field is coupled to its sources. So the field equations couple the gravitational field to its sources. The gravitational field is induced by the presence of sources, matter or objects and the gravitational field manifests in the curvature of space-time described by the Einstein tensor. So in this one here uh, we have the geometry and here we have the material uh, objects that cause the gravitational field because matter in Einstein's uh, theory 
is still the cause of the gravitational field. It's just that in his theory, he includes mass and radiation in the term matter. Let's write this in words so that it becomes perhaps a little easier to understand. So we have here G, it's space-time geometry, that is the gravitational field, equals minus kappa times the material sources or objects which induce the gravitational uh, field, or rather induce the curvature of, the of uh, space-time. Because it's the curvature of space-time that is Einstein's gravitational field, and in that way, gravitation is no longer a force in general relativity. There are no force, gravitational forces, even though it's often said that bodies will collapse under their gravitational forces. This is a misnomer because there are no gravitational forces in this theory. Now, what Einstein does uh, in the simplest case, he says, let's make all the material sources or the objects that cause the gravitational field, this is this part here, We'll set that to zero, and therefore we get an expression G U V equals zero. Well, comparing this to the same expression in words, let's write this out specifically in words. So we have space-time geometry, which is the gravitational field, equals zero. So we have on the left a geometry and on the right zero. But that means we have no material sources in this expression. Here it is mathematically, here it is in words. We have no matter, no material sources. Nonetheless, Einstein and his followers indeed tell us that uh, this is the expression that describes the static vacuum field. Well, another way that they say this is that this, field, uh, this is a set of field equations that describe the uh, gravitational field in the absence of matter. A third way they say it is that this describes the gravitational field outside a mass. Well, outside a mass such as a star. But when we examine the expression here, we find that we only have space-time geometry. There are no masses. There are no material sources. So what we have is a situation of a circular argument. Let's have a look at here. So I'll put here field equations, right? And then we go around and we say, well, this equals zero. So no sources or objects or objects because we're looking at objects as being physical things. So it goes around here, and then over here, as we're traveling around this circular argument, back to our start here, where we've got a set of field equations that is outside a mass, or sometimes said static vacuum field, or according to Einstein, in the absence of matter. So we start off with a set of field equations, these. The objects are set to zero, well the energy momentum tensor becomes zero. We have nothing other than an expression that says space-time geometry equals zero. There are no sources here, no objects, but we're still told that nonetheless there is an object present. And how? With the words outside a mass or outside a body. So all material sources are removed from the equations. There's nothing there to cause the gravitational field because we only have space-time geometry in this expression equal to zero. But then with the next breath, it said, this describes a gravitational field outside a mass. So the mass is reinstated immediately after being removed. It's reinstated with the words outside a mass. So the argument now is circular and therefore it's an invalid argument. Let's give one last example to illustrate how ridiculous the arguments of the mathematicians are. Assume we have a magnet. The idiots of mathematics are saying that they can remove the magnet and the field stays behind. Perhaps with a right size hole to fit the irrelevant piece of metal in it later on. 
It never occurred to the deranged lunatics at the quantum and relativity loony asylums that the magnet brings the so-called field with it. In essence, the idiots of mathematics believe that a field is a physical, standalone object. They have reified Faraday's abstract field and converted it into an ocean. <laughs>